Twin City Lines didn't do, a, a, they did a lot of newspaper advertising, uh, but before 19, the 1920s, maybe about 1925, um, it was always just kind of announcements of new service changes. They put a little graphics in to announce the startup of the Lake Minnetonka season. But other than that, it wasn't. However, during the 1920s, ridership uh, started falling, um, falling kind of considerably, and they uh, took up advertising. Uh, first, I should point out the logo. Uh, the logo came about, I want to say 1905, with the expansion of Twin City Lines. I mean, exp expansion to Lake Minnetonka. Um, before that, they really didn't have a logo. And supposedly these kind of semicircular things were taken by the designer from the arches uh, in the pavilions at Big Island. I don't know if there's anything to that, but uh, that's what I read. So anyway, um, this one I actually just pulled from one of the newspaper ads and blew it up, which is why it looks a little blurry. But we start out with some things that basically say that the streetcar company uh, is the most important thing in the metro area for all it does. I kind of like this. You've got a conductor and you have a lady and a child right here. And, uh, and so it's a basic industry. As you can see, it's just tying the whole city together. I don't think this is in Minneapolis, but okay. Although, although this kind of looks like the streetcar power plant over here. And here we are. I wish the shop crews, Dick, I wish the shop crews could do this. Poof, and there you go. You aren't crew. the only one, Aaron. <laughs> I wish they wore that uniform. Yeah. Well, we have to find the genie. So here you are, the hub of progress. We go everywhere. Churches, homes, suburbs, schools, railroads, you name it. And of course, uh, we have the 2002-2003 experimental lightweight train set that through the 1920s and into the 30s was kind of the face uh, of modern equipment for them. How you like this? The market of America it is unfortunately no longer the market of America, but oh well. One thing I've noticed, and you'll see this as we go through, is that whichever artists, and I'm sure these are artists at an ad agency, wind up making the cars have a lot more windows than they actually had. <laughs> so you, you can count them later on. But look at all the good things that streetcars do. They build cities. And here you see yeah, industry, and then you got the the bucolic suburbs. And here they are connecting downtown with the residential areas. And in some of these cases, there was an ad text and I just didn't take it. I was so taken with the, uh, the graphics themselves, which are just pretty neat. And there's a certain emphasis that if you really like reading your paper, you should read it on the streetcar. This is just kind of cool for graphics, this pointillist style. Here's our daily achievement. There you go, there's the gentleman reading the paper, lady in a cloche hat. She's playing footsie with the guy on the right. Yeah, she kind of is, isn't she? I think that's an optical illusion. I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> and so you'd see, you know, there are a lot of these uh, ads that did themes. So we go to the churches, go to the Miller's Games, and they had this framing all around them with uh, the logo, and there's 2002 and 2003. You saw this in a lot of them. And this is about the factory breaks, closing time at the factories, and they discharge all their workers. And this is also a factory break ad. More than 30% of our streetcar travel is during two hours of the day. The additional men, power, and equipment to maintain the rush hour. The period just after the whistle blows. Is there any place that has a whistle that blows anymore? 
Hmm. Uh, Glencoe, Minnesota has one. Really? Yeah. Cool. So then where they're going to market to elegant ladies. Here's a, here's a car with a lot more windows than the car actually has. Aaron, do you have any idea when streetcar went from two words to one word? You know, you see it as two words for a long, long time, and then you also see it as one word. And so, and I've done a lot of searches in the old newspaper, and the answer is that it was used both ways all the way through. <clears throat> and so here's shopping, and uh, here's this miserable guy out here in the snow. <laughs> yeah, who's walking away from his from his car. And then uh, here's these series. I, I ran these in Twin City Lines where um, it's breeze conditioned in the summer. And then it's heat conditioned in the winter. And here's another one on that theme. Summarize your winter riding. And see, here's these poor guys trying to dig their car out of the snowdrift. What price have it? Motorists work and worry and pay and pay. And all of this so easily avoided by summarizing. You'll laugh at old man winter. And then there were some ads that said, for crying out loud, you know, would somebody do something about traffic so we can get our streetcars through it? Because this is what happened starting in the 1920s when everyone bought cars. Here's another one. Give the majority, meaning the riders of the streetcars, a, a square deal. To try to get through all this traffic congestion. That could also be a don't block the box ad. Uh, yeah. And of course, here, look at all the crowds of people out in the middle of the street getting on, getting on and off streetcars. And then uh, this is another one in that same, a 10 minute tie up affect many sections of the city. A mishap in the loop, this must be the mishap and four car lines are blocked up. Now, this one right here is an ad designed to offend all women. Um, it says here, records for a single month show reports of 141 accidents getting on and off streetcars, of which 108 were women, 29 were traceable to high heels. And if fashion's high heels and decorative innervations are a prolific cause of accidents to women. So there you go. If you didn't have women riding the streetcars, we wouldn't have all these accidents. Or if they didn't wear shoes. That's true. And so here we are, we have, you know, nasty weather and, you know, people and all that. This car has a lot more windows than we actually have. Here's another one. Nice warm street car. It's more than a fair weather friend. And here's this guy working on his car. And in fact, through the 20s and the 30s, lots of people simply put their cars up on blocks in the wintertime and rode the street cars and then used their automobiles in the summer. That's a real thing. On time, kind of cool. This is a World War II ad uh, to come and work. Actually, no, it'll be post World War II because it got a PCC. Come and work for Twin City Lines. And uh, here's a steamboat ad. And some ad boat graphics. And then there's a bunch of them here on this is the you know the work we do and this is what all goes into your transit system. So you got an org chart with the, the general superintendent and the superintendent of employment, Minneapolis division superintendent, St. Paul superintendent of schedules, street supervisors, station foremen, inspectors who were the uh, supervisors on the street, the all female office force, and then we have all the trainmen. Dave Higgins, that, there's your inspectors right there. That's how they fit in. That's right. And a trainman is selected out of hundreds of applicants. And the courteous but doofy looking conductor. 
and then uh, Snelling Shops. Guys working on all sorts of cars here. There is back in the Snelling Shops. Jacking the body off. Is it pretty good graphics? Aren't they? Aren't they? Yeah, they're excellent. I know they had to hire somebody to do this. <clears throat> There's the power plant. And here's the underground cable system. Accounting and stores. And this is all about speed. They had a couple of ads that said this is the fastest speed car, speed, pardon me, streetcar system in North America with an average speed of like 12 and a half miles an hour. One minute service to the state fairgrounds. And I'm not quite sure where they ran this thing because this is in fact what ridership was doing. Now this was about uh, getting fares to go up. This was when they had gotten their emergency six cent nickel fares and I wanna say about 1920. Uh, but other cities at the same time were charging seven, eight, and 10 cents. Shopping best by streetcar and uh, Christmas. Here's one you hadn't seen. I added this one, the Grand Parade for Winter Carnival. Oh, and part of the selling point is no private motor cars will be permitted within the assembly area, but the streetcars and buses can do that. Here you go, football, back before there were helmets. And I ran this ad in Twin City Lines. I love this ad. Where could they be safer? And just the, here's the number I hadn't seen before. The employees of Twin City Lines and their families number over 19,000 people. They are a city within the city. See there, Bill, Bill keeps his car in the garage, goes to work. And here's a lady, uh, she gets to read all the advertisements during her restful streetcar ride. So then she uh, doesn't have to look at them later. And here is another one. No, I read the paper this morning when I was on the streetcar. So you are riding the cars now, Fred. Yes, I got tired of trying to find a place to park. And then a couple ads here that show how much less room it takes to use a streetcar rather than automobiles. Here's another one. Hey, Aaron, yeah, can you a... back up to that one that said 48 to five? You know, when we started selling ticketed events for like the murder mystery, I think Bill will agree we used to start by selling 48 tickets. We had to stop that because people are too big now. We couldn't get 48 of today's people on the streetcar comfortably. So we had to cut back to 46 and now we're at about 40. And the car is still full with 40 people because instead of getting four or five people on the peanut rows, you get three. Wow, okay, cool. And this is the forever lament and this has never ended. Uh, that even though you have two cars, everyone will try to get on the first one. It was late to begin with. It will just make it later. Nobody ever goes back to get on the second one. That's true in buses today. And here's Bill the Motorman making that same uh, lament. Some folks remind me of a man with a stiff neck. They can only see one car at a time. And then there were a couple about, you know, don't do something foolish like this, you know, stop in front of the streetcar and run out in the middle of the street to try to get on. And then we get to World War II. You saw this as the cover of Twin City Lines where 
they were lobbying for uh, staggered hours. So uh, they would, as the streetcar system had only so much capacity. Here's another version of that, that same thing. And here's one, and I don't know if this was in the conjunction with the war, but without streetcars, University Avenue would be have, have to be four times as wide to handle the traffic. And it is now four times as wide, it's called I-94. Beat the five o'clock rush. Motorette ads. And then this is the last one. Uh, the new PCC started showing up in about 1946, 47, and uh, they ran them around the city and gave free rides on it for a while. And that's the end.